Student assistant staff that work through ESDs across the state come from numerous backgrounds related to providing social emotional support to youth. Because of that divergent professional backgrounds, it is helpful to ground your approach so as to assure your boundaries are aligned with the mission and functioning of the school setting. Remember, when a student leaves your group, they will go to their next class and be expected to be ready to learn. Students need to have their feelings allowed, heard, and acknowledged but not probed or left raw within the group experience. One way to manage this balance is to create a predictable schedule for when the groups operate as well as for what occurs during groups. Plan for openings to last about five to 10 minutes. The topic for the day lasts about 30 minutes and then closings begins five to six minutes before it is time to leave. This will create a sense of safety and ability to shift from one thing to the next as a norm. Of course, it is important to offer to stay with a student or visit later if needed as exceptions are to be anticipated. Even if you only have a 20 or 25 minute session, consider your openings, middles, and closings. It is a best practice to start and end groups the same way each meeting. You may present how this is done or encourage the group to come to an agreement on how this occurs. Either way, predictable starts and stops help with establishing a mindset for group engagement, increases a sense of safety and trust by establishing predictability, and demonstrates support for transitions. Our first icebreaker, uh, I call it the name game. And so what we're going to do, and I will demonstrate, I'll tell you first, and then I'll demonstrate what we're going to do. So the objective is to state your name, right? But before you state your name, you want to uh, think of an adjective that starts with the same letter of your first name. Okay? So, I'm a, so for example, I'm going to say, hi, everybody. My name is Vivacious Vicky. And I'll turn this way. And then you'll say, hi, vivacious Vicky. I am, and then you'll say your adjective and then your name. Okay? okay. Then we look that way. Then you'll say, hi, vivacious Vicky. Hi, so-and-so. I am, da-da-da. Right? And then we'll keep going and going and going and going until we'll then, yeah, you're the lucky one. <laughs> and if you want to challenge me, okay, I'll be the last one and I'll have to say everybody's name, but that's kind of sort of how we got to do it, okay? Okay, so ready? So we're just going to start off um, with a, write a little kind of writing activity. So. Um, I know you guys come into this with a lot of stuff on your mind, just like you do every day. Um, so if you can just, we're going to take like a minute and just like free write anything that's in your brain just to get it off your mind and put it down someplace. So just, we're going to just like scribble things out that is on your mind. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to make any sense and you don't even have to share it with anybody. Just get all out of write down words or thoughts that are in mind. All right, so I just want to check in. Um, how was it for everybody to empty your brains out on a sheet of paper right now? How was that for you guys? My brain is mostly empty already. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that makes things easier. <laughs> it was pretty cool because it was kind of nice to just like let it all out and then come back as like, Obviously, like it's not uh, everything is just out and is gone, but it's definitely like, significantly less, which is cool. Okay. Yeah, it's like a nice way to like organize your thoughts. And just so, how are we to come back now into group with that? Like, if, if there's still. Right. So we're just gonna move into um, how we normally start a group with our check-in. So it's up here. The what's your temp? So just like when you're sick, the worse. The higher your temperature is, the worse you feel. Um, so 10 is not very good, and then uh, down to zero, you're doing okay, or you're doing pretty well. So, um, just let's start this way. Today, um, before, you know, to close.
close out um, our activity is we want to go around and everybody gets to share a random act of kindness that you are going to commit um, to doing today. It could be anything. Right, awesome. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So this was an awesome group. Um, um, let me get your passes so I can send you back to class and I will see you guys next week. I want you guys all to just kind of take in a deep breath and just let it out. And I want you guys to get in touch with your own bodies. And so what we're going to do is called a body scan. And we're going to start with the top of our head and go down through the tips of our toes. So I want you guys all to notice, like, if you weren't able to go there with the body scan, what maybe kept you from going there? And if you were able to go there and you noticed some different things within your body, some tensions, areas that you were holding tension, how breathing can actually help release those tensions in the body. When students share their current emotions in group, recognize the risk they are taking and know that on some level they are testing for trust in these moments, it is crucial to maintain focus. A way to do this is to 1. Acknowledge the feelings. 2. Universalize. Find a way to show that others can relate. And 3. Return to structure. Structure of groups is often welcomed once a student feels heard and supported. This technique works especially well when students continually go off topic. A little more annoying, not at me, but my dad really blew up me last week. He started screaming at me just because I said that I don't want to smoke anymore. And so I told him that I was going to go to this group thing and left and haven't been back since. Mom texted me a while, said to come back so we could talk it out, but. After acting like that, I don't, I don't want to go back, you know? <laughs> and that's not a problem, though. My neighbor just called the cops on my mom because she was beating on me. It was so funny. Reagan, I get the idea that this has created some anxiety for you. And obviously, you don't want to go back to your parents' home after this blow-up. And Justin, I'm... Um, curious if maybe you're not feeling some anxiousness too around your situation as well. I'd like to look at maybe some ideas that you guys might have of how you can um, handle these feelings without using bud. Um, what are some things that maybe can calm your nerves? I'd like to spend some time noticing the feelings um, that come up and then using them as a guide to help think through a plan that could help with the next steps for each of you. In class today, we were all passing around a jewel. It was freaking hilarious because the teacher kept looking at us with this confused look at her face. She's an idiot. It was funny. I'd like to actually hear more about that because I think that that is a problem for the teacher. Um, but right now I'm noticing that the conversation got stirred away. Um, to what Reagan and um, Justin were talking about. When a student is so upset that the focus is diverted from a group dynamic, it may be useful to offer to connect with that student after group. So what are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything. Nobody's nice to me, so why would I be nice to them? You know what? I totally get where you're coming from based on earlier some of the things that you said you were going through. So is it okay if you and I um, spend some time after the group? Um, I'm going to send them back um, to class and then you and I can just go a little further with that because I don't want to send you back to class like that. Are you cool with that? Sure, whatever. How do we support you? We just had an offer. I don't know. Maybe you guys could be nice to me, I guess, but I don't know if that's enough. So I'm guessing when you say it's not enough, you're feeling just kind of a world of hurt right now. Like your support people don't have you. 
mm-hmm. at the moment. What do you guys think? Are we her support people for the moment? Yeah. Yes. yes. Do you see her at any of the times during the day? Like in yeah. classes or anything? Will you accept that? Can, yeah. we, your, can we have you back? I just want to let you know that we're here for you, you know? Yeah. We, yeah. we have your back. We're your people. Just come to us. And any way that you feel, you know? Because that split second that you decide to do something that could potentially like change your whole world, it changes everybody's world as well, you know? Just, we appreciate you, you know? We're here for you. But don't do anything extreme. We got you. We're your friends. Each support group session is designed to meet the objectives found in your manuals and often focus around activities followed by discussion. There are times when a planned activity won't work, but it is best to have activities ready to go. Educational groups are structured designed to teach and try on new skills. While there are lots of curricula to pull from and the objectives are clearly set in your manuals, each week what you and the students will bring is something different to the group. Making this more of an art than a science as it calls on you to navigate between your judgment of what is needed in the moment and your commitment to maintaining enough structure to support safety and learning. This results in a level of professional judgment that supports flexibility, but keeps you on your toes for keeping the boundary between therapeutic value and educational value. If you find your check-ins lasting longer, your group dynamic becoming more therapeutic, or kids taking turns gaining from you rather than each other, remember to refocus on the purpose and limits of groups and find a way to return to the structure and rhythm of assuring a clear beginning, middle, and end. Your supervisor is an excellent resource for identifying manuals, books, and skill development resources. The ultimate learning curve, however, is time and practice with your students.